So depth perception. So near versus far. How close is something to us? How far away? Um, so early on, uh, infants start adjusting hand shape to objects that they're reaching for. So they start forming their hand to be able to pick something up. Um, they can start using auditory cues for objects. So if an object is making noise, then they can figure out, um, start to figure out where it is. And they can also make adjustments if something's moving to be able to grab something by about six months. Another thing is called a looming stimulus. So this is, a, things are made to look like they're coming at you like a 3D movie. And here's a little internet symbol. You can click on this site that goes to a developmental neuroscience lab and they have, uh, they show you how um, infant study is done with a looming st stimulus. You can see the uh, example of that, you, and in this video also is an infant with a brain imaging device that has little sponges on the cap and it picks up brain activity. So they're looking at what's happening in their brain when this looming stimulus is coming at you. Um, so youngest infants, they blinked when this thing was coming at them or they looked like this thing was coming at them. Um, older infants actually were able to, the timing of their blinks was when that object would collide with them if it were actually an object. So this looming stimulus looks like it's coming at you. And so by seven, six to seven months, blinking is actually anticipating, if that were a real object, when that would collide with our faces. And as this photo shows, depth perception, it's an important skill. Looming stimuli, that would be a ball coming at you. The visual cliff is a famous, this is one of these dun 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 important moments in child development. Um, mothers were beckoning their babies to crawl across this device. If you look at this thing off to the right, and there's a video to go with this that you will need to watch, it's a required video. Um, so they're on this checkerboard thing, and then they put plexiglass over where there's a cliff. So technically they can walk over the cliff and not be harmed. They won't fall off the cliff, but it looks like they'll fall off the cliff. So mothers are at the other end of it and they're saying, come on over here, come on over here. And so seven month olds who were able to crawl, they refused to come across. But the seven months old who weren't yet crawling, they would agree and they would crawl across that plexiglass. So it seems like the ability to generate our own motion, get ourselves places by crawling, um, that seems to be the key. And so, um, one researcher concluded that it was the continuous updating of our orientation. So we always know where we are in order to move ourselves forward. And that's the piece of understanding when it's safe to walk across something and when it's not safe to walk across something. So pause here and open up the visual cliff video and you'll get to see a demonstration of what that looks like when a mom is beckoning her infant to crawl across. So what about younger infants? Well, Campus, who's one of the main researchers on visual cliff studies, placed two-month-olds on the deep side of the table. So they lowered them down where it was low onto the plexiglass, and it actually showed that their heart rate slowed down. And this is one of these sort of opposite things, where slowing down means more interest. So they showed some more interest. Their heart was noticing the difference, even if the, they looked comfortable being lowered down onto this plexiglass over this cliff. And the clear fear emerges around seven months. And the two months old, they also put their hands out right before they touched down um, on the shallow side, but they didn't do it for the deep side. So they could definitely sense that there was a surface there um, that was safer. So there's, it's the beginnings. This is something that looks discontinuous. So back to this continuous versus discontinuous theme. It looks like it happens all of the sudden once infants start crawling. But we see in two-month-olds that actually there are some of the beginnings of preparation to be able to have that kind of um, fear emerge to prevent us all from crawling over cliffs. So how is audition? So we're moving on to hearing. Habituation is used, and so sucking or heart rate is used about habituating um, infants to sounds. Um, then they listen to one sound, they get bored of that sound, and then they habituate, and then a different sound is pre presented. Um, sometimes looking whether or not they turn their head to listen to something else. And then, like I mentioned, the sucking paradigm, which sounds really funny, but um, that they suck at a certain rate and they hear one voice, and they suck at a different rate and they hear a stranger's voice. So if they want to hear their mother's voice, they suck at rate A. 
and so they can control what they hear. So these are some ways of studying hearing. Audition, so sound detection is present at birth, not very good. Um, the range is higher than adults, and if you notice that when adults are talking to infants, and we'll talk more about this in the language unit, they tend to raise their voice up to this higher pitch. And they also do other things with their voice, but the pitch actually works with the way infant hearing. So um, when an infant shows interest, it's actually rewarding to adults, and adults talk higher because the infants are clearly responding more to them. Not to say that infants don't respond to lower voices, um, but there is part of that tendency. Um, it's not just this sort of expectation of baby talk. There's actually something functional about it with hearing. Um, prenatally, the auditory system functions by about 25 weeks. Um, the fetus can hear loud noises in nearby conversation, mostly hears the rhythm and intonation of mom's voices. And just a reminder from the prenatal learning, um, the Dr. Seuss study that you read about in which infants were read a Dr. Seuss study in the last six weeks of um, pregnancy and then they showed a preference through the sucking paradigm for the story that their mom read to them. Dr. Seuss very rhythmical, uh, rhythmic and, um, and differenti di differentiation of syllables. There was the experiment that you read about where they, they said ba or ba b or, and um, infants in utero were able to, I'm sorry, fetuses in utero were able to differentiate syllables.